Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. I'm turning 30 this September, the big 3-0, and I'm planning to make this party my biggest birthday party yet. And I'm gonna take you guys throughout the whole planning process. I love hosting and I've thrown a lot of at-home parties, but this time I'm definitely taking it up a notch. So in a previous vlog, you guys saw that I was touring some venues for my party and good news, we finally landed on one, but I didn't even tell you guys what the theme of the party even is. It's going to be a roaring 20s 30th birthday extravaganza. So think Great Gatsby, all things 1920s, art deco, speakeasy, glitz and glam, the whole nine. So I came up with the tagline, say goodbye to Raven's roaring 20s, a 30th birthday celebration. I feel like the Roaring Twenties are kind of all about that opulence. It's more elegant, it's more formal, it's very glitzy and glam, like I said. So I really wanted the party to reflect that and that's why I really wanted a nice venue. I was specifically looking for a venue that had a vintage feel, obviously to go with the 20s vintage vibe, but I also really wanted one that had a really nice built-in bar to go with the speakeasy aspect. So like I said, you guys already saw me touring a few venues, but what you didn't see is the one that I landed on. It's called Hotel Zaza and there's a venue space in there called Perfect Strangers. It actually used to be a full running restaurant, but it's not a restaurant now, they just use it for event spaces and it's perfect because it was a restaurant, it has a beautiful built-in bar. What I really liked about it is that it already had that vintage vibe that I was talking about. It has a lot of artwork and just like that eclectic, moody feel that I feel like is perfect for this Roaring Twenties theme. So the venue is secure, but that was only step one of this whole long process. There is still so much more to think about. I have to do everything from finding a bakery to make my birthday cake, finding where I'm gonna get all my different outfits from, because I do plan on doing multiple looks, finding decor, a band, food, drinks. There's so much left to do. contract started now we need to figure out what else do we want uh, in terms of you know cake our band our decor your costume we have yes. a lot of details to figure out there's a lot of moving parts i already put together like this whole pinterest board for a lot of the details like the main overall inspo i have a lot of big dreams for this party because i really want to make it like different and special over the top better than my last party you know I have inspo for a lot of different things. I don't know if we're gonna bring all this to life, but like some of the main things, number one, I want my outfit to be full glam, full formal, long gown to the floor, maybe like working with a custom designer to create something. I think it would be cool to like collaborate with a designer or a brand on that. And then of course, asking the guests to also dress up in 1920s flapper style vintage stuff, except I want the overall vibe to still feel like formal cocktail party. So not like Party City costume flapper. High quality, well-designed costumes. Yes, and almost like not even a costume. Almost like, just pretend that you really are in that era, Can what would you wear? Can I use the word wear? cosplay? Like it's, it needs to be like accurate to the time. It's like, I'm scared to use the word costume because I feel like that gives the guests the wrong path to go down. Vibes. How about inspired by? Formal cocktail attire inspired by fashions of the time between. Yes, yeah. I think that's a good way of putting it because it's like, I want you to go to the store and get a nice dress. There's a lot of current styles that have that inspiration to it, whether it be fringe, feathers, sparkle, sequins. Maybe you would get some actual costume pieces for like your headband or your boa. Accessories, Accessories yeah. are more costumey, but like the dress itself is more like a real dress, if that makes sense. Which I know this is gonna require a lot of sharing inspo with the guests so that they know what I mean. Is which there a color scheme for the for the party. Well, there is our, our, the attire. our deck. Attire, you know, I know how you love the thing. Is it neutrals? Is it black, white, and gold? Is it just whatever you want? The color scheme for the party is black, white, and gold. I'm kind of torn on should I 
ask the guests to stick to that same color well, scheme. you can give them that inspiration. They don't have to stick to it, but you can inspire them with. Because I think that's sort of, that's the Gatsby color scheme anyway. So most Generally, of what they would- stick to it. I also already have some inspo for what I want for my cake. Art deco, black, white, gold. I don't like some of these super gaudy cakes that have all the feathers and stuff. Although I do want it to be razzle dazzly. I need to just like put together what I fully want for that. Do we have uh, vendors that you're considering for the cake already? Well, we've worked with Sugar Shaker Bakery multiple times now. Yeah. For Zai's seventh and your last birthday. So I'll talk to them, see if maybe we can get something started. Yeah, because I've liked working with them. They've done a good job on all the custom intricate cakes mm -hmm. so far. So another big thing that I want, a live band. Oh. What kind of music? Well, to go with the theme, the music of the time was jazz. It was a big, you know, in the 20s, big jazz renaissance <laughs> of jazz. But do I like jazz music? Not really. So what if it's a jazz band that plays covers of modern songs that I like? Like Bridgerton versions. Yes, like, yes. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, cool. Hmm, where do you find a band that pay, plays modern? That's the question. That's your job. That's my job. <laughs> so will it just band. be, the music just be strictly the band or are you gonna have a DJ and the band or in between the band sets? Cause sometimes bands take breaks depending on how long the, the party is. Is the band gonna be playing the whole time? What's gonna be playing in between? I want it to feel, especially now that we've seen the venue at Hotel Zaza, it's like a bar. It's a bar, it's a bar restaurant setting. My vision for this is that you're transported into the twenties and this is Raven Speakeasy Bar. They wouldn't have a DJ. They would have a band playing the whole time to make it feel more authentic. So I think just the band. And hopefully they can kind of play the whole time so there's not any awkward pauses, but I don't really know how that They're, works. Yeah. They do not play for hours. They take a break at least once an hour. If you're looking for a jazz band that will play live, that will play modern, modern versions. Jazz versions of modern songs. There you go. And that can also do some kind of so that we, not, we don't have radio silence in between that radio. Yeah. Is there a singer? Or? Yes, sings. So oh. not just instrumental. Okay. But we'll see what we can find. Cause okay. I don't, I mean, I've never had any sort of live music at anything I've done before, so. We will need to figure out um, the menu for Hotel Zaza. I'm getting it from our contact there. We're gonna need to figure out what we want served. Yeah, cause I could see by their uh, contract that they have a food and beverage minimum. I don't know what that includes. If that includes bar items and if they have, if we can create our own custom menu, if they have some items. Yeah, cause us. I wanna do signature custom cocktails. I just think it would be cute to have certain cocktails set aside that I've chosen and they have like a certain little name that goes with the theme and I imagine like menu signs set out on the bar. Of course you can order whatever you want outside of that too. Depending on how their bar package works or whatever. Thinking about my last birthday party, that was like the a really good turnout. That was like, even people I invited from out of state ended up coming, which normally don't come. So that's sort of like best case scenario example. And that was like 50-ish. So I kind of assumed the same thing for this yeah. party. The space looks great as it is. It doesn't need a whole lot. There is one thing in the space as I was reviewing the photos and stuff that I took, I do not like that big thing that's on the back wall. It's like a big giant framed thing of like book covers and it's like red, yellow, blue. I know they're not gonna take it down off the wall, but like cover it because that throws off the color scheme and the vibe of the venue. And it's a huge thing like right when you like walk in, that's the only thing I don't like about the venue itself, I think. But other than that, like they have like vintage framed art and everything already and it does, art, and it has like the chandelier. So I think the only thing we really could add in there is A, something to cover up that thing and be like tabletop, like centerpieces. Mm -hmm. That's throwing me off. I'm pretty sure we can hang something, even if it's just like fabric in the theme. Cause the bar, I really like the bar itself. It's pretty neutral. Mm -hmm. It has a vintagey look to it. Again, I, I think like having menus, signature cocktails, some little candles or something on the bar top, something to cover that. And that could, whatever is covering that could also be like a main decor focal point to really bring home the theme. Like there has to be something big that lets you know this is a Gatsby party. Are you gonna leave space in the, for people to dance? You know, on like a designated dance area? I want to leave standing space regardless. I don't know if dance floor is necessary because I don't imagine, I mean, I don't know. Are people gonna hit the dance floor and like all dance in an area or is it just sort of everyone yeah, spread we're gonna, around? We're gonna, 
actually need to, you know how I'm with my schematics. Yeah. Floor plan, this is where the band's gonna be. Yeah, I was is gonna- a photo booth? That's another thing, photos. We're all over the place with this, but we will of course narrow everything down, but photos is another thing. I really wanna make sure we get really good photo and video, not only just like of me and for myself, but of the guests too. They're gonna be in their costumes, blah, blah, blah. So I think some sort of photo booth aspect would be really cool. At the venue, they had that little corridor when you first walk in, kind of that ducked off area, and they already had like a vintage desk thingy. So I think playing into that and having that sort of be like the prop and have more props and that's where people sort of pose and interact with the vintage props. Maybe it's like a vintage telephone or something and people can like pose like this. You can have cocktail glasses, you can have bottles of liquor because prohibition, you can have cigars. We've pretty much covered everything. You're gonna look into the cake, the band, getting the menu from Hotel Zaza. I might need your help with that. I'm gonna look into getting more inspo for what I want for my dress and then start reaching out. There's one dress designer in Dallas that I wanna reach out to first, I've worked with before. Then I'll, I'll kinda of look around on Instagram and see who else I can reach out to because I really think like getting something custom would be cool. So I'll see who I can reach out to like on Instagram. I was gonna say, I wonder, since we just sort of did a quick walk through first impression tour at Hotel Zaza, as far as what you were saying about like dimensions and where is everything gonna go and how everything exactly, do we need to do another tour more specifically to actually map things out. Now that we have an idea of all the different elements you're going to want and what the issues are that you want to hopefully correct, I can we can take our measuring tape and we can actually do a schematic at some point. So you'll reach out to Hotel Zaza and try to schedule another tour. And yeah, go from there. Yeah. All right, go team. All right. Go team. <laughs> so we did already do our initial tour of Hotel Zaza, but that was more like a quick walkthrough, trying to even decide if that was the venue we were gonna go with. So I really felt like we needed to do a second tour to actually be able to map things out. With our first tour, we didn't take any measurements. We didn't even count how many tables were in the room, which is definitely something we need to know because we need to know how many centerpieces we need for how many tables and things like that and actually figure out the layout of the room and the furniture. They did tell me that I was able to move the furniture around however I wanted. I could add things in, take things out. So I need to finalize my decisions about the layout of the furniture so I know what I'm working with so I can build off of that with the decor. Just starting from the top, the first main two sections I was thinking for this main entrance way is on this side, since we have this nice little corridor kind of already built in and they already have this vintage looking hutch with whatever this vintage object is. I don't know what that is, but they have like a typewriter. Maybe we could pull that up and move this out the way. But this is where I see the photo booth being because we can have all of our vintage props, the telephone, the cigarettes, some extra little stuff to put on. They also have this table, which is good because I didn't remember if they had another surface for us to be able to like put more props mm -hmm. for people to put on. I think we should also bring a chair of some sort over here so you can like sit and pose and like, like actual vintage photos versus just like, geez, I'm at this party. So you're gonna need to bring in some kind of a lighting, a ring light or something for the photos? Well, yeah, and that should really be up to the photographer. I'm hoping and assuming that the photographer will provide all of that and know all of that. Obviously it's gonna be at night, so this light coming through here, we're not gonna have that, and it's gonna be very dark in this corner with just this little chandelier. So it is gonna have to be some sort of lighting, softbox, ring light, something that the photographer is gonna have to use, and maybe they'll use flash on their camera or something. And I wanna have some sort of sign that designates this as the photo booth so people know to come over here. I already have like the template with the kind of Gatsby vibe to it and make it say like photo booth, whatever. We can't put anything on the wall. We could like prop it up here, have like an easel here to hold it, or maybe we could 
prop it up on this table. On this side, obviously we'll move this foam, but I think this will be a good spot to do the party favor display because we'll have a couple of different options like shot glasses, matchbooks, playing cards, all this stuff, customized stuff that's gonna like look cute and match with the theme. And I just imagine like some sort of tiered shelving thing so you can display it nicely so it's not just like piled up flat and sort of have it just look like a little store display almost. And then we could also do another sign to explain these are the party favors, feel free to take one. If we're doing the signs on the tables, what's holding up the sign? We need like those little things, those little stands. So we need to take note of like how many of those stands we need if we're doing one here, one here, and then we'll see the rest. I don't know if there's gonna be more. So since this is like you're just walking in and I know that that's, you wanna make that impressive display, should we do a centerpiece piece like feathers? or something? I mean, it's already got decorativeness to it. I, I'll have to see. And also there's not a lot of space to work with and I do have multiple items to put here. Well, that might be too much okay. in this spot. But for those feather centerpieces, you're talking about those big. Yeah, you can make, we can do them ourselves. Yes. Possibly. So blue. I definitely want to do the feather centerpieces. Not sure about putting it right One there specifically, okay. but for the grand room itself, I need to figure out which tables are staying in here to then figure out how many centerpieces we're putting on the table. So that's what I wanted to see first. We already talked about removing these. One, two, three, and all these bar stools, take them out because it's like, they're too big, they're in the way, and I want more standing room. And Olivia told me that they actually have these like smaller circle, so it'd be like just more like this size. Mm -hmm. No chairs around it. So just a place to stand and put your drink. And they're like a black color, so it'll go yeah. good with the theme. So four of those, so that means four centerpieces on those. Then over here for these booths, obviously we can't remove these and I'm fine with that. So that's one, two, but on this side for these tables, she said we can remove these so that this side acts more like a couch mm -hmm. instead of more like, cause it's not dining. It's like more like lounge, bar, speakeasy vibe. So it's more like conversational versus you don't need like a table to really eat at. And then for this table, again, we don't need all this dining space. So I would rather this be more of a lounge spot, like just like two armchairs or something. Mm -hmm. I want to take this out and that's cute. I like that lamp. And so it'll also kind of be like another photo moment. Okay, this I like, like this is what I was talking about. Another something like this for that. But this is fine, we can leave that there. Or maybe, should we scoot this over there? No, I think two spots because this, otherwise this whole hallway is just gonna be empty. So I think just two spots, bring in two extra chairs for that moment over there. Okay, so leave that there. These are the patio chairs that go on the patio, which we do have patio access. So if people wanna go outside and be in that area, they can. I don't plan on that being like a main part of my party, but it's just sort of there. Mm -hmm. If you need an extra place to sit down or wanna get some fresh air. And then, so here's the door to get to the patio. But I was thinking this would be the main area that would be best for the band. There's the plugs right there. She said we can remove these tables. Obviously we can't remove that built in. As long as we take this part out, that frees up more space for the band to fill up this whole corner here. Like probably out to just barely where you could like walk past them to get to the door. So like the singer is like here and it's, it's I think this is a good spot cause it, you know, mm -hmm opens up to the whole party. I think the only other spot we could put the band would be way over there in that corner, but I don't like that spot as much. I'm glad they fixed the issue oh, yeah. with the photo, with the picture that was up there, because we were gonna have to do a bunch of hullabaloo. To yeah, I really that hated up. that. <laughs> she said they're actually gonna put mirrors on it. That's gonna be great. And that's gonna be really fun too, because if it's mirrored, I know people are gonna wanna use that for like selfies. Everyone gather around and like take a mirror pic, or like it'll just be like a nice, focal point. And then the last seating is the bar stools. They just have these four bar stools, which I think is fine. Cause I really don't want the whole bar to be full of bar stools. Cause again, I want people to stand up, walk around, but then again, you do want to sit down sometimes. So mm -hmm. I think this is a good balance of like having a few spots to sit down, but mostly you can like stand up and walk up to the bar. So I think just leave these how they are. That's fine. And this is where I want to put my custom cocktail menus, just like a few, like every so often. Okay. They have these TVs. I just realized though. Like, you know how at like restaurants and bars, they put the menu up there. Like that's the menu screen. But it's yeah. like, I don't want it to be like McDonald's. No. no. What if you do a slideshow of your photos? Mm. Is that cheesy? 
It's like I don't want it to look cheesy. I don't want it to look like. So I think there's you... a way to utilize these TVs in an elegant way, and I have to a think black about and it. white '40s movies like Casablanca or something. Twenties. Like I just don't want it to be a cheesy slideshow PowerPoint. Okay. I saw some like examples on Pinterest where it was the main vase in the middle, a framed photo, and then like candle another little something, like something. a candle, a decanter, and a little, so it was like sort of a little coupling of things. I like that. I did want to have bigger pictures besides just those. Where would you put it? That was to be decided. So that's why like, to your point, using the TVs could be good for that if it's done well. Think about that TV that's part of the gallery. You, know? you could do both. You could do a slideshow and then cut to the movie and then slideshow, just so it wouldn't be just like you, the same shot. So it's my birthday. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be me. That's the whole point. Why am I doing this photo shoot if I don't want people to look at it? Yeah, I'm allowed to be self-centered for this one occasion, I think. I'm glad that Hotel Zaza was very easy to work with as far as doing multiple tours because sometimes it's really hard for me to visualize things just going off of pictures online or them just verbally telling me, oh, there's X amount of tables. I really need to see it in person to fully visualize it and decide what I wanna do. One thing we didn't think about is the cake like where the cake is actually going to be during the party because we talked about taking these tables out and not having these tables, but we need a table for the cake. And I definitely don't want to have it just like sitting on the bar or anywhere where people are going to be possibly bumping into it, but I want it to have its own, like I want it to be visible throughout the party. So it's got to be visible, but it can't be in the way so people can have a chance to knock it over. Yeah, like I definitely don't want to put it on any of these main tables that we're going to have here. I don't want to put it on the bar, but I also don't want it to be like, ducked off in a corner. Those bar tables, that's the perfect size for it. Well, if we ask for an extra one of those and put it maybe like over here, out of the way, just you're coming in, you know, you see the cake table. It's like right here on this part of the bar, like right here. Don't you know, it's not gonna be in the it. way. Yeah. And then also, you know, since you want that cake to have its moment, we need to decorate the cake table with something. This is different than any other party that I've done before because I'm used to doing these at-home parties here in the comfort of my own home, DIYing a lot of things. My mom makes the food, I make the decorations. I typically don't work with too many outside vendors, but this is like the complete opposite. It's at a venue. I'm gonna be working with a lot of different vendors. So there's gonna be a lot of different moving parts that I'm not used to. And so I know I need to be extra organized for this party. I'm not a professional party planner, but I've thrown a lot of parties and I feel like I'm learning as I go and I'm getting better with each party. So from experience, I know how important it is to have all your information saved, written down. You're gonna be communicating with a lot of different vendors. You need their contact info and what's going on with them, but you also have your own shopping list and to-do list. There can just be a lot of information to keep up with. So it's super important to have everything saved in a consolidated way. That way you can refer back to it throughout the party planning process. And having that experience with all these parties that I've done recently is actually what inspired me to create this digital party planning guide because I wanted to create a resource that would make it easy to keep up with all the chaos of party planning. So the guide is gonna include a bunch of checklists and worksheets to help keep you on track. And it's also gonna include a lot of my advice from everything that I've learned from my personal experience over the years. So if you're interested, go ahead and check out the link down below. Hello. So I got the Hotel Zaza menu and all the pricing and everything from Zoe and I just printed it out and we can just go over everything now. For once, Chef Tony, my mom, will not be making the food for one of my parties. I think she has literally made all the food for every party I've thrown up until this point, but we are actually going to have it catered by Hotel Zaza. They offer it as part of their kind of event package. It all goes with the venue. So they have a menu to choose from, and I decided that I wanted to do like past hors d'oeuvres. It's not a sit down dinner, but I did want to have a good amount of food being passed around because it is going to be kind of during dinner time. The thing is, is I'm not used to working with a caterer. I'm used to working with my mom and just giving her like a general idea of what kind of food I want for the party. And then she figures it out and she handles it and I don't even have to do anything, which is great, but that's not the case this time. All I know is that I have a menu of items to choose from and I have a $10,000 minimum that I must reach. That sounds like a lot. I have no idea how to properly allocate that budget amongst all the different food and drinks. So I'm doing what I know how to do, which is ask my mommy. 
your vision for this party is not to have like a sit down or any kind of a buffet full dinner. No, it's not supposed to be a whole dinner. I just want like past hors d'oeuvres, appetizers, small bites. Like even if we could have the waiters going around with the tray, passing things mm -hmm. out, literally. Mm -hmm. They have the menu actually broken down into, you know, past hors d'oeuvres. The thing you need to remember though is like, well, what, what are the hours of the party? I think seven to midnight ish, four hours ish. So since it's gonna be at dinner time, people are typically not gonna eat before they get there. Well, too bad, they need to. <laughs> so, well, I'm just saying, it's gonna make a difference in the choice of the type of appetizers you choose and how many appetizers you have per person. I feel like it's gonna be a lot because of that $10,000 minimum anyway. Isn't that um, kind of a lot? Of yeah, but that's for food and drinks. We'll talk about how you wanna handle the drinks after we talk about the food. Mm -hmm. So we'll just say four hours of eating time. The reason I mention that is because you calculate like a certain number of bites per person per hour, especially if alcohol is being sold. So you need to calculate five, four to five pieces of appetizers, bites of appetizers for each person for each hour, which means if you have 50 people and there's four hours times five, that's a thousand pieces. So eight between 800 and a thousand bite-sized appetizers is what, what you need. What? A thousand little individual appetizers. When you say bites, when you say appetizers, are you literally envisioning tiny little things? Is that why? I, I think they are made to be, when they say a bite, that means a bite. I mean, you know, women may eat theirs in two bites, but it's basically a bite. <laughs> What's gender got to do with it? Because, you know, guys. Okay, we'll well. Put it down. Barbecue pork belly bites. So you're thinking one little chunk of pork belly like this. Mm -hmm. My recommendation would be to go with at least 800 pieces of appetizers. And the way that this this menu is done, the way the what is recommended for this many people is to have 18 up to 18 different appetizers. Just by looking at this list, I would kind of bump it down to maybe 15 different appetizers, 15 or 16. Pick the most popular, what I think would be the most popular. Well, let me stop you there. It says 50 piece minimum. Right. Per item. Right. So 50 times 15. 50 times $6. That's gonna be $300. No, 50 piece minimum per item and you wanna have 15 items. 15 different items. How, so what's 50 times 15? That's 750. Oh. That's where I would start. And we can talk to, you know, whoever's over catering at Hotel Zaza just to confirm this. They may say, now I've been to an event at Hotel Zaza where they had, was it appetizers? Some of them were appetizers and some of it was like a stage buffet, but I mean, if they say that, no, our appetizers are at least two bites each, or certain appetizers, like the chicken satay, maybe two bites each, or the chicken and waffles may count as like two bites. So I've already looked at this list and kind of checked off the ones that I think would be most popular and that your friends, friends would like the best. Making, keeping in mind that I want to keep a balance between hot and cold, and I also want to have at least one or two vegetarian options. And you can look at this and let me, know what you think about it. Okay, barbecue pork belly bites, crispy crab rangoon, crab cakes, chicken satay, crispy artichoke, and bu what? Bourjan, bourjan cheese, that's like a cream cheese. That's one of the vegetable things. Okay, chicken and waffles, definitely. You can choose a chicken tender. I think the chicken tender okay. is necessary. Yes, tempura shrimp, chicken fried lobster bite, yes. Mint compressed watermelon. I was thinking of vegetarians, but. The, yes, the tomato mozzarella bruschetta, that's a crowd favorite. Crab, avocado, salad. Caramelized shallot dip stuffed gruyere, gruge, gruge, gruge. Gruyere. So imagine like a puff pastry with some type of a cheese. In it. So do you think like most of your friends are adventurous eaters or are they pretty plain eaters? I think if people look at the dish and they can't tell what it is, they will probably not eat it. Okay. So I think we should go for more common, more familiar okay. looking items. And I see okay. you've chosen some adventurous ones, so you might need to change that. Plus, mm -hmm. you haven't checked off some of the things on here that are my personal favorite. Oh. And I feel like it's my birthday, so yeah, so we might need to re configure the choices, but basically I need to pick 15 of these. 
15 to 16. That's what I needed help with because I had mm -hmm. no idea how many to pick, but I can do that. Like finalize 15 of these. So did you already calculate about how much that comes out to be? Based on the choices that I picked, uh, it came out to be like around $5,000, maybe 5,500, something like that. So that's only half the minimum that I need to spend. Do you think it should be half and half food and drink? Well, I think we should stick a pin in this and then let's look at the drinks and how they add up on the budget. And then we can come back to the food and adjust that. So there's a lot to choose from on this menu, which is a good thing because I don't feel limited. Like I'm glad I have, you know, good choices. But the bad part about that is that I'm feeling overwhelmed because there's so much to choose from and I don't know what to choose. I don't know if I should choose foods that I like to eat because it's my birthday or should I choose just more like the basic things so that I can make sure that everyone has something that they like to eat. I don't want to get too much of this and too little of that. And I really don't want to waste food. I'm trying to feed a good amount of people and it's going to be a lot of food and I will feel so bad if people don't like what I chose. So it's just left on the tray at the end of the party. And so I'm trying to ask my mom what she thinks as far as which specific dishes people will like, but everyone has different tastes. So it's kind of hard to tell. I'm just trying to find a good balance between what I like, what my guests are gonna like and having a good variety of options. But honestly, I'm feeling overwhelmed. So I'm not really sure about what is the hosted bar on consumption versus a bar package. The way I read it was I was most likely going to do a bar package plus a specialty set of signature cocktails that are probably priced per cocktail. That's a separate thing that's not really laid out on here, signature cocktails. That's something we have to talk to them separately about. I think we mentioned it and they said, yes, it's doable, but we need to talk to them about like exactly how to set that up. But my idea was start with a bar package. It includes beer, house wine, house champagne, and soft drinks. That's not all it is. It's plus whichever one of these liquor selections you choose. Oh, okay. So it, this is what they all come with no matter what. And then you're choosing which liquor level you want, basically. $55 per person, basically like per person per hour type pricing. So the way I understood it was it's a certain quantity that they will stock you with. This is what your bar is stocked with and it costs this much because it's per person per hour. So you say how many people, you say how many hours. Okay, it costs this much. You use that up and when it's gone, it's gone or if this you don't per, use it. This $55 is per hour and not just for the whole, because it says for four hour duration. I like the deluxe package because of the types of liquor it has. I don't know if your friends care, but I would rather have Tito's So and it's Bacardi. basically like a low, medium, high, shelf level liquor, it looks like, right? So for $5 extra, I would go to the medium. The $60 package times 50 people, that's $3,000. And if there's an additional hour, $10 per person. per person, so that's an extra $500. So that's $3,500 for liquor. For this, just this bar package to have the bar stocked up with these things, it's a certain amount, you know, and then we run out or whatever. And then I was saying on top of that, have a signature cocktail list, probably three cocktails preset. This is what the cocktail is. This is what it's called. You can order that. That's what we need to ask them about because I'm not sure how they would price that. Okay. So we've got $5,000 for food, $3,500 for the bar. Plus you have to pay for the bartenders, but that's not included in your in the $10,000. So if we just round up- dollars for your signature cocktails. Let's just say we've got $5,000 for food plus $3,500 for the bar. That's $8,500. And that leaves $1,500 in your food and beverage budget for your signature cocktails, three signature cocktails. Once we check with them, then we might want to adjust our food up a little bit. Either way, I, we, we want to spend up the 10,000. So it up. either if, it, if we make it to there with the custom cocktails, if it still needs more, we'll add more food. Right. Okay. Luckily, my mom has worked in this industry and she has a lot of knowledge about serving sizes and how to calculate how much food you need per person. So she was able to shed a lot of light on that, which I would have had no idea. So that was very helpful. Coming up next on Raven's Roaring Twenties Birthday Bash.